So we've looked into the Surface Studio and the Surface Pro, but there's another new Microsoft product to get excited over. If you've been using the MacBook Air for the past few years, this might be the first Windows device in a very long time that could convince you to switch. We've had the Surface Pro and the Surface Book, but sometimes you just want that traditional style. This is Microsoft's very first Surface laptop. I mean, look at this thing. The build quality is exceptional. A sleek, well-designed aluminium shell with a matte finish, where all the seams and screws have been hidden. It's something that really catches your attention when you see it, and is without a doubt one of the most premium and modern looking laptops on the market. This is the Platinum model, but there's also a range of colours available that all look great. Now you may have noticed that that keyboard deck doesn't look metal, and it's not. Microsoft have gone with the polarising decision of making it Alcantara fabric, the same material found on the signature type cover. And you can understand why people are a little worried. A fabric keyboard deck? What happens if I spill something on it? Or just the wear of having my palms on it every day for a couple of years? Well, Alcantara is a composition of polyester and polyurethane that's predominantly used in fashion design and car interiors, and is well known for durability and stain resistance. The folks over at VentureBeat.com put the Alcantara type cover to the test, with coffee, red wine, and pizza grease, which all came off with a single wipe. The only stain they could get was after leaving the coffee on there for an hour. So as long as you give it a wipe shortly after the spill, you should be okay. But why fabric? That's a harder question to answer. I must say that when you go to use this laptop, it is a nice feeling to be greeted by a soft warm fabric under your palms, in contrast to a cold metal base. But that might not be for everyone. Also, the way that the fabric is glued to the body means that there's a seam between the screen and the laptop deck when it's closed. Either way, the keyboard itself is a joy to type on, and it feels a lot nicer than the type covers you get on the Surface Pro. The trackpad is also bigger on the Surface Laptop, and everything just felt like it was the right size and in the right place. The speakers are also underneath the keyboard, and they sound good, and even manage to get a good stereo separation. As for the hardware, this model is sitting right in the middle of the available options, running the latest Intel Core i5, 8GB of RAM, and a 256GB SSD. And this is the model I think most people will want to aim for. I really have no complaints with performance. Running 9 or so apps at a time is no problem, and it'll be able to handle everything you need to do, except for serious video editing or hardcore gaming. The screen is 13.5 inches with that awesome 3x2 aspect ratio. It's slightly lower resolution compared to the Surface Pro, but it still looks nice. Of course, being a Surface, it's also a touchscreen, although on the Surface laptop this feature isn't as useful. You can't bend the display back far enough to make it comfortable with the pen, and you get quite a bit of wobble, but it still has uses in certain situations. Now we have to move on to some of the disappointing features. I've already talked about the lack of USB-C on the other devices. And yet, on the Surface Pro, there's not that much space, since the type cover doesn't have any room for ports. But on the laptop, you have this whole deck, and all you get is a headphone jack, display port, and a single USB port. And that just seems crazy to me on a traditional laptop. USB-C is not only much faster at transferring data, but it can also be used as a video output, and can carry power to charge devices as well. It's such a handy multi-function port that's becoming widely adopted, and when you're spending this sort of money, you want to know that it's going to be ready for the next 3 or 4 years. I know they're trying to push the Surface Dock, but this is a portable workstation, and you shouldn't have to carry extra bulk just to plug in two USB devices at the same time. And then of course we need to talk about Windows 10 S. You may have heard this laptop doesn't come with full Windows 10. Windows 10 S is a stripped down operating system, similar to what you'll find on a Chromebook, which means it'll only run what Microsoft will allow. You won't be running any .exe files in this OS, and instead you're restricted to the Edge browser, the Bing search engine, and apps from the Windows Store, which, as you may know, is missing a lot of third-party apps still. This OS is aimed towards students and does have advantages. Because it only runs Windows Store apps, it's a lot more secure. The OS is very lightweight and will boot almost instantly, and it has a lot less power draw resulting in a few extra hours of battery life. But if you're unhappy with Windows 10 S, Microsoft are offering a free upgrade to Windows 10 Pro for anyone who buys a Surface laptop until the start of 2018, and then after that it will only cost $90 or so. I'd say the vast majority of people who buy this laptop will take that free upgrade and never look back. It's a simple button click, and it only takes a couple of minutes. Windows 10 S is not a bad operating system by any means. It doesn't feel like a half-baked version of Windows 10. It feels like Windows 10, and it comes with some nice benefits. But until those apps catch up, I wouldn't recommend spending this sort of money on a laptop to only restrict yourself to the Windows Store. So the free upgrade is a no-brainer. Bottom line is, this is a really great laptop, and anyone who gets one will be very happy with it.
You just have to make sure you're 100% certain when you choose your specs, because this thing is not made to be opened. But the build quality is super high, performance is good and has a very respectable battery life. You can check them out on display at your local PB branch, or online at pbtech.co.nz. I'm Eli from PB Tech, remember to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.